that there's a great need for new drugs for psychiatry. And psychiatric diseases are marked often by deficits in social interaction. So our hope was that if by understanding the genetics of social behavior in an animal that's much more tractable to experimental studies, we could ultimately find new therapeutics for disorders like autism and schizophrenia. Right now we're trying to understand the social behavior of zebrafish. They share a lot with humans and in the young animal we can see into the body and study every cell in the brain and also the internal organs. Nature is very conservative. So genes are used again and again through evolution. Our presumption is that a social behavior gene in a zebrafish might well be a social behavior gene in a human, but of course play out in a different way. Wild type fish swim nearly continuously. They move together and then they separate. Individual fish will break off occasionally and come back together. Uh, but the whole group will keep moving and first in schools and then sometimes together in s small swarms that are called shoals. One of the mutations we made in the fish was to knock out a gene that's related to autism. The phenotype we found afterwards was one in which the fish were scattered. They seemed not to interact at all or sometimes they would barely get close to each other and then separate away. Another mutation that had a dramatic effect, which was essentially the opposite, was a, a, by mutation of a gene that was related to schizophrenia. In this case, the fish huddled together. They did not seem to align or move very far apart. The third mutation we made was in a, a gene that's actually related to addiction. And in this case, the fish were hyper-coordinated. They seemed to swim around continuously together in these schools. What we were hoping to find were what we would call algorithms for stimulating the fish so we could say, what can we do to an individual fish that will predict how it will interact with the group? And we found two algorithms. The first is we expose the fish to two dots, one's bigger than the other, and they move away from the bigger dot. And the second is to expose the fish to many hundreds of moving dots and the fish tend to move along with that pattern. What was really fascinating was that when we made mutations in those genes, which would cause the fish to be scattered or huddled, the fish's different responses to those algorithms would predict how they responded as a group. So in other words, we're able now to go into the fish's brain knowing that we can stimulate an individual larva with these very simple stimuli and know ahead of time that that will predict how they will act in groups. Over the next five years, I think we will begin to understand how changes in individual animals change emergent collective uh, interactions. What changes inside the brain in order to bring these kinds of changes about. So in other words, we may have a, a crack at understanding the synaptic circuitry that underlies autism, schizophrenia, and un other diseases. At its core, these questions are those of renewal. How to make synapses change, how to make circuits re-engage. Those are part of the very fundamental principles that are being studied in the Stem Cell Institute.